In this video, I'm going to show you a beginner friendly way to make floor plans for free. So we're going to be using a tool called SketchUp. It's completely free. Just go to sketchup.com, make a free account. And once you're inside SketchUp, you're going to uh, see something like this. Now, as SketchUp updates, sometimes they make a different person here or a different starting um, background color or something like that. But you'll, you'll be in a space that looks something like this. And SketchUp is usually used for three-dimensional modeling. So if I were to uh, take this rectangle tool right here, and I'll, I'll point out the tools here in just a second, but just showing you if I were to make something like that and pull it up, um, we're, we're usually in this three-dimensional space. We're actually going to make this a two-dimensional space that is completely white. So it looks like we're drawing floor plans on a piece of paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit spacebar. That gives me the selector tool. I'm going to click on this guy and hit delete on my keyboard. And now what we want to do is make the background completely white. So if we go over here to styles, it's these two little shapes right here. And we clicked on the search icon and went to default styles. Um, we can change the style. Now, if we were doing three dimensional modeling, we might want something like this blue sky, green grass sort of look. But because we're making a floor plan, we really just want an all white um, background so that it looks like we're drawing on a piece of paper. So I'm going to click on this one here. Now everything's white. The next thing we need to do is we need to uh, get a top down view so that we're not in this three dimensional space. Because again, we're just making a floor plan, which is a two dimensional drawing. Now, if I were to hit O on my keyboard, it would give me this orbit tool right here. You could also click on it right here. I could sort of try to get a, a vertical top down view, but that it wouldn't be perfect. And the best way to do it is just go over here to scenes, which is this little icon. And then down here, go to standard views and select plan view top. So just to show you what happened, if, if I were to orbit here, we could go back into this sort of three dimensional view um, where we started. And it just gave us a perfect top down view. Now, again, instead of attempting that myself, I'm going to go to, uh, to scenes and plan view top. So now we've got this top down view and we're going to delete the red, green and blue axis that's used to um, model in three dimensional space, but we don't need it. So before I do that, let's go ahead and draw our first rectangle. So every tool in SketchUp has a shortcut. These are the tools right here. And the rectangle tool right here is going to give us a rectangle. And instead of clicking on it, I could just hit R on my keyboard. So when you hover over tools here, it shows you the shortcut. So I've got the rectangle tool and what I'm going to do is use this origin right here, which is where all the points meet just to start my drawing. And then we're actually going to delete these lines, like I said, and it will just look like we're using a piece of paper at that point. So if I click once, I can drag this rectangle out. And when I click again, it's going to lock the rectangle in. Now notice down here in the bottom right corner, the dimensions are right there. So instead of trying to eyeball exactly what I'm looking for, we can just type them in. So if I type in 20 apostrophe, because we're going to abbreviate foot with apostrophe, comma, 32 apostrophe, and hit enter, it gives us a rectangle that is 20 by 32. Now, I'm scrolling with my mouse to go in and out. That's sort of how you'll navigate, especially when you're in this top down view. You won't use the orbit tool at all, so you will just use the scrolling on your mouse. So if I put it over here and scroll away, it moves that way. If I put it over here and scroll inward, it moves that way. So that's how you'll sort of orient yourself. It'll take some getting used to. Now, I want this rectangle to sit this way. So what I'm going to do is just back. I'm going to hit Command Z. I'm on a Mac. Control Z if you're on Windows. That uh, deletes it. You could also just click on this eraser here and erase. I'm going to hit R again for the rectangle tool. And this time, instead of 20 by 32, I'm going to type in 32 apostrophe comma 20 apostrophe. So I've just changed uh, which dimension came first. We've just reversed the order of the numbers. 
Okay, so now we have our 20 foot by 32 foot rectangle. So I can go ahead and remove the red, green, and blue axis so that it, uh, they're not in the way and it just looks like we're drawing on paper at that point. If you go right here to display, it's the little icon that looks like glasses. Click on that and then you'll see axis right here and uncheck that box. So now you can see everything went away. So we're just, we've just got this blank white canvas and our project right here. So we know that this rectangle is 20 feet by 32 feet. The first thing I'm gonna do is add a thickness to this. So if you were making a floor plan, you'd want to know the thickness of the walls um, because that is a factor as far as the inner dimensions of your plan. So um, what I'm going to do, there's a few ways we could do this. We could use the line tool here. We could also draw rectangles, but there's a tool called the offset tool. If I, if I uh, go down right here and click on these three dots, it shows more tools. Now the offset tool is this one right here. Now we don't actually have to open that up. We could just hit F on our keyboard and it will pull this tool up. So this is the offset tool. And what it does is it draws a shape identical. It draws a shape inside of a shape, identical to that shape, but uh, different dimensions. And so all I have to do is anywhere in this rectangle, I'll just click and drag. And so now we've got another rectangle. So if I type in 6.5, hit enter, I've got six and a half inches uh, between these two rectangles. And the reason I chose six and a half, let's assume that we're framing a house with two by six lumber, which is uh, two by six lumber is not actually six inches wide, it's five and a half. I don't wanna spend too much time on the details of that, but we're gonna say five and a half inches plus a half inch of finish on this side and a half inch of say drywall on this side. Okay, so that gives us six and a half inches. So that's why I did that. So we've got six and a half inches here. And if we wanted to zoom in, we could hit T for the tape measure tool. We could find it down here. And I could click here and go to this one. And if we look down in the bottom right corner, down here in this part, it shows the length of the tape measure. And so it shows us six and a half inches. So we know that we did it right. And I'm just gonna scroll outward to get a better view here. So. Now we've got our outer perimeter and the thickness of the wall. Um, now you may want to depict, uh, so if you were making a floor plan, you might put a legend right here to show the reader of the plans exactly um, what wall is what. So this is gonna be our two by six wall. And so we might wanna fill this in with a color or a pattern. And that way, if we frame the inside with like two by four walls, you can see the difference. So one way you can do that is you can click on this paint bucket here. The um, shortcut for it is B, B as in bucket. And then you could go to, let's see, go to the search icon right here. We're gonna look for patterns. Here we go. We've got patterns and I could click on this pattern and just click inside there. And so now we've, got a pattern to depict this. And again, if we were to make a little legend right here, it could say two by six walls and then have a little square with this pattern on it um, just to show that that's two by six framing. And so now what I'm going to do is make a room inside of this house here. And I'm going to hit L for the line tool. You can find the line tool right here. It looks like a little pencil. And we know that this wall is 20 feet. so. If you hover along this line, when you get to the middle, it's gonna show this blue dot. That's the midpoint. So again, see how it's red along the line until I get right there, it's blue. And we know that the wall is 20 feet, so that midpoint must be 10 feet because that's half of 20. So I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna come out another 10 feet. So just like the rectangle tool that we used, we can just type in our dimensions. I could type in 10 apostrophe, which would be 10 feet, or I could just type in 120, which is 120 inches, which is also 10 feet. And so now um, I, I just clicked once, or I, I hit enter because I typed it in, and I've still got a line. If you wanted to get rid of this line, we're actually gonna close it out here, but just to show you, if you wanted to get rid of this when this is happening, just hit the space bar and that's gonna give you the selector tool and now you no longer have that line. But we actually did want to keep the line going just for one second to connect it right here. And so we know that this is 10 feet by 10 feet. 
And what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit and click on this line here. And I can hit uh, E for the eraser tool. And I can just erase that line. And I could do the same thing right here, just erase the line. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a thickness to uh, the line we did here. We're going to do it a different way just to show you how to use SketchUp. Um, instead of doing an offset inside the wall, we're going to do it on the outside of the wall. And one simple way to do that is to take that tape measure tool, which is T for the shortcut, or you can find it in the um, little icon panel here. And I'm going to just click anywhere. I happen to click on the midpoint. It could be anywhere on this line. And I'm going to pull the tape measure um, perpendicular from the line that we clicked on. And it will give us this guideline. So this time we're going to assume that we're framing with two by fours for the room here. And a two by four is three and a half inches. And again, half inch of finish on each side. We'll call it four and a half inches. So I can pull this anywhere, but I'm going to type in 4.5 and hit enter. And so now we have a guideline that's four and a half inches from the wall there. And we're going to do the same thing here. So just pull this out, type in 4.5, enter. And now I can just hit L for the line tool. And I can start here, click here, and click here. And then now if I hit E for the eraser tool, I can erase these dotted lines here. And so now we have a wall inside of a wall. And again, we'll just leave this one blank. We could choose another pattern to depict the two by four framing, but we are only distinguishing, we only added this pattern here to distinguish between the two different thicknesses of walls. So now let's go ahead and add a door here. So what I'm going to do is again, use the tape measure tool. I'm gonna pull this out and we'll just uh, go with something like I don't know, 18 inches. I'll just type in 18, hit enter. And so we're 18 inches from this inner part of the wall here. And then what we're gonna do is hit L for the line tool. And we're just gonna make a little line right here. This is gonna be one side of our door. And so now we want to take the tape measure tool again. And I'm gonna zoom in just so I'm on this line here. And then I'm going to bring this over 32 inches. So. Let's assume we've got a 32 inch doorway here. I'm gonna hit L again for the line tool and just do that. So now if I hit E for the eraser tool, I can get rid of those guidelines. So the way that we show a door here is we hit L for the line tool and we're going to make the door. I'm gonna type in 32. Okay, and then now that we've got our door here, which is 32 inches, we need to show the uh, direction of the swing and so what we're gonna do is open the three dots right here, and we're gonna select this arc tool right here. The shortcut is A, but it will also bring up this tool. Um, so I'm gonna click on arc, and now all I have to do is click on this line on one end, click on the other, and I can just pull it right here. So now we're, we've got a door, and if I hit E for the eraser tool, I can erase this line, and that is our 32 inch wide doorway into this room and it shows the swinging direction. And you don't have to, um, you could have them swing out, you could put it anywhere you want. I'm just doing this as an example. Um, so you would do that same process on the exterior walls for doors. That's how you depict doors and floor plans. Um, let's talk about windows. A way that uh, people depict windows on here is you first decide where your window is. So let's assume we've got a window that's going to be six feet along this wall as it's uh, six feet to the edge of the window. So I'll type in six apostrophe. And we've got a line here. And then we'll assume that the window is four feet wide. And we could just pull this out from the same point and type in 10 because the first line was six feet. We're adding four feet to that. So now we've got this four foot space here. And what we're gonna do is just draw a line here like we did with that doorway line here. And so um, we can click right here. We hit space bar for the selector tool, clicked in the middle. So when I'm clicked off of it, it's not highlighted. Click right in the middle and it has these dots to show that the face is selected. If I hit delete, it gets rid of that. And the way that windows are often shown is take a line right here and just draw it right in the middle there. So there's our window. 
So this is how you show a door. This is how you show a window. And again, we're going to hit E for the eraser tool and get rid of these guidelines. And um, so that's the basics. Um, basically, you would just draw in all the bedrooms you want, and you would um, draw in all the windows and doors you want, and you could model a complete floor plan this way. Um, if you want to know how to actually show dimensions on the edge here, the problem with SketchUp is it has a tool for that, but it's in the pro version. So we're in the free version. Now inside the pro version, there's a tool called layout, which allows you to sort of click and drag and it automatically adds the dimensions. Now, if you don't want to pay for something like that, you could take this project into something like Canva, which is canva.com. It's a free sort of graphic design thing. And you could make your own sort of uh, lines. You could draw a line here and have 20 feet and all the dimensions. You could add it to it for free. If you um, think this is something you're going to do a lot of, I would recommend you just get the pro version and then use layout and SketchUp. So if you are going to do that, you'll save your project. Um, we're going to call it whatever we want. You just save it right here to SketchUp. And we'll call this floor plan. Saved. And then now when you're in uh, the home thing in SketchUp, you'll take whatever file you're using and you'll um, just go to these dots right here and select download a copy. And then you can take it into SketchUp Pro and use layout to do the dimensions. So that's how you create a free floor plan with SketchUp. There's probably a million ways to do it, but I'm just showing you inside SketchUp. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.